Now we're done with the contextual factors component. Yay, we're one seventh of the way there. Before you start the other six components though, you gotta have a conversation. You have to select the topic for your unit. Raise your hand if you can tell me, why do I have three people in that picture? Yes, ma'am. You, your supervising teacher, and your coordinator. This is a conversation that has to happen with all three of you. So those conversations are rare, right? Capitalize on them when they happen, okay? But this is absolutely a conversation that all three of you need to have because your cooperating teacher has things that he or she is thinking about, your supervisor has, your coordinator rather, has things that he or she is thinking about, and of course you have things that you're thinking about, okay? I do wanna draw your attention to the word unit. Unit is defined in different ways by everyone. So here's my question, right? How many of you are secondary science? Okay, in a secondary science textbook, how big is a unit? Uh, six to eight chapters. Six to eight chapters. Good night. When I taught uh, life science at the sixth grade level, our unit on the cell, that was like almost all of the entire first semester. Don't bite off more than you can chew. That's way too big of a unit. Some people go by the calendar. Oh, a unit is two weeks. Whatever I do in two weeks, that's a unit. I'm gonna have a test every two weeks because that's what I do. Okay, that's a little bit too arbitrary, right? And of course, your teacher might have a, a definition of, of unit that's different from your own. So let me tell you how the teacher work sample thinks of a unit. A unit is from three to five learning goals. It's at least a week long. It can be no shorter than a week because you have to have enough data to, to aggregate to analyze, but please make it no more than a month long. Keep it manageable. One of the comments that I got back on the feedback survey said, the teacher work sample was unbelievably involved. I had an 11 week unit and, and then they went on, but that, that's why it was too big to manage. An 11 week unit, that's this much data. Cut yourself some slack, okay? Three to five, at least a week, no more than a month. We good there? Okay, so that raises the question, what's a learning goal? Now, you know you have standards that you have to follow, you've got a curriculum that you have to follow, you've got a curriculum map or, or calendar that you have to follow. You have certain things that you're trying to impart to your students. Using our bus definition, or bus metaphor, what is that? Where's the school bus driver taking his or her students? To the school. This is where you're taking your students. This is your destination. And it's very important for you to define that destination. If I get in the car from here and decide that I'm going home, I drive in one direction. If I decide that I'm going to Tallahassee, I drive in another direction. And if I decide I'm going to Jacksonville, I drive in another direction. I've got to do different things to get there. Your goals also have to be specific enough to be useful. If I told one of you to meet me in Orlando, how helpful is, is that to you? Not at all. It's all different parts of Orlando. And, and, and believe it or not, some people call Disney Orlando too. So that's like way down there. And, and what do we do with that? I love how all these conferences take place in Orlando, but they all meet on International Drive, which is way south of us. Right, so this is your destination. Now, there is a website, there's a link for it in this, this file. But there's a website that does a really, really excellent job of talking about the difference between a learning goal and a lesson objective. Anyone wanna take a guess which one of these two pictures is the learning goal? The bigger one, yes, the bullseye, the target. The arrow is your lesson objective, it's very specific. This is what you teach and assess 
in a single lesson, right? The target is your learning goal. It's a little bit more general. Your learning goals are going to cover your entire unit. Now, I won't get into a great deal of detail on that website because I highly, 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 highly recommend that you go look at that website. It's ridiculously useful. But I will give you an example. Now, my example of a teacher work sample is written on a geometry unit for the sixth grade. I went with what I knew. In my first couple of years of teaching, I taught math at the sixth grade level. So the best examples I could come up with for, that were analogous to your experience were those first two years of teaching, okay? So I'm doing geometry because I'm a geek and I love geometry. Um, there's my standard. Understand the concept of pi, blah, blah, blah. There's my learning goal. Notice I've sort of changed the language so that it fits what I'm going to do more precisely. And there's my lesson objective. I'm going to come back to that lesson objective a little bit later. Let me draw your attention, though, here. These are vitally important for your learning goals. These are accessible verbs. If they explain, I can evaluate it. If they list, I can evaluate it. If they estimate or calculate, I can evaluate it. Those are ridiculously important verbs because that shapes everything from that point on. Here's your requirements. From three to five learning goals, they have to be measurable. Remember, those accessible verbs are really important. And they have to be challenging. Now, here's the rub. What does challenging mean? In your education program, you should have been exposed to something along the way that gives you a sense of how to measure challenge. Anyone have an idea off the top of their head what it is? Yes? Pushing them to think critically is definitely an aspect of it. I'm hoping you recognize this. Bloom's taxonomy. Oh, yeah. OK, yes. Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom and Crathwall came up with this taxonomy of learning. Now, this is an excellent, excellent way to think about higher order thinking. But it's been improved. Notice this second name, Crathwall. Okay, that name appears here as well. Anderson was a student of Bloom, studied under him, and she and Crathwell, one of his original co uh, collaborators, revised the taxonomy to switch everything into verbs because they're just more easily understandable, right? Um, synthesis, I'm like, what's synthesis? Uh, how, do I, how do I wrap my head around? But creating, creating makes sense. If I'm creating something, I, I, I have an intuitive sense of what that looks like, right? I also like to show it this way. Because really, you should do more of that stuff than you should of this stuff. If you have students remembering all the time, you're not challenging them. They should be creating and evaluating and analyzing and applying. Do that stuff up top more frequently. Make sense? If you're in the market for really good verbs, remember that website, website I showed you with the arrow and the target? That website has a page that has verbs associated with each level of this taxonomy. Great place to start when you're writing lesson objectives and learning goals. They also need to be varied, both breadth and depth. They need to be appropriate for your students. They need to fit your context. They need to be linked to the next generation Sunshine State standards because those are our standards, and apply to the whole unit. Remember, the target is a little bit larger. Okay. Do me a favor. Define mastery. Because that's another requirement of this component. 
you have to define what mastery of your learning goals is. So define mastery. Yes? When you can teach someone else, you've mastered. What else? Yeah. They can apply it. It is possession of great skill or technique. I, I went to the three dictionaries that I could find for free, because really, who buys a dictionary anymore, right? And, and these are the, the definitions I found. But what I want to point out is that those are applied. How much you know remembering that bottom level of the taxonomy, that's not mastery. 9,000 knowledge level questions, 9,000 remembering questions, just demonstrate that they've got a bunch of knowledge, right? So think about how your students need to use the information or the content that you're teaching them. 80% is, is the cutoff that I use in my example of a teacher work sample, but that's based on how those assessment items are constructed, right? Don't set your mastery level at a point where they, they can demonstrate mastery and not have actually mastered it. So real quick, to be proficient, you got to do the stuff we already talked about. But there are standards out there besides just the sunshine state. So I want to draw your attention to this note. Learning goals must be linked to the next generation Sunshine State standards because that's required of us. But there are so many more. Any uh, English language arts folks in the room? Maybe y'all want to check out NCTE, the National Council for Teachers of English. Science folks? NSTA, National Science Teachers Association. Math folks? NCTM who recently had their convention in Orlando, yay. Um, so these professional organizations also have standards that you can reference to, to link your learning goals to those standards and demonstrate more exemplary level reflection. Um, there's also the Common Core, which you might as well get familiar with no matter what your program is because they're coming down the road for everybody, right? Uh, or the Partnership for 21st Century Skills, has a framework for 21st century skills that they recommend students work on these things in addition to curriculum. So that gives you exemplary indicator too. Down here, that's all about connection. Connecting your learning goals to other elements of your content area is, is E3, and E4 is connecting your learning goals to other content in other areas. Because really, nothing we learn is in isolation, is it? It's all connected. Show that, and you can demonstrate exemplary performance.